Hello, everybody. Table Beast here. I finally am doing this. Uh, what you see here is a Yamaha PM1000. This is a module from a mixing console from the early 70s. And uh, this is the uh, input module. Uh, this one is uh, channel 15. Uh, I bought a, a bunch of PM1000 parts, and amongst them was four of these individual channels. Uh, originally, I was working with a studio, and he, uh, the guy wanted a, a vintage console, but he didn't have a ton of money. So we found one of these guys. We found one of these consoles for like 600 bucks, went and picked it up, uh, brought it back. I recapped the whole thing. I did a couple of modifications to it. This is the input transformer. Then, this, then the signal goes to this thing. And this has got a pad that is in the circuit and a pad that's in front of the circuit. So it goes all the way from minus 60, which would be in, uh, you know, for a microphone that needs a ton of gain, all the way down to plus four, which is for line level signals. Signal comes in there, goes through this, then it goes through, uh, actually it goes through these EQ circuits first, and then this is last, the high pass is last of the EQ. And then you've got selectable mid range, uh, the, the, the bass and treble are essentially a high and low shelf um, booster cut. Um, and then the mid-range is uh, stock. It's uh, either 1K, 2K, or 4K. Um, and then that, that signal goes out both echo sends individually. And then there's this pan control, which sends it to any of these four um, master sections. Anyway, this console that I built, I designed my own kit, my own recap kit, because we had a 16 channel console and I had to do 16 channels of recapping. I had, I still had some parts left, so I decided, I decided to sell a few online. And uh, anyway, I, I haven't sold tons of these kits over the years, but I've sold enough to make it worth doing. So this is the first time I've redesigned this kit since back then. Um, I, I, I had a version 1.0 that I had for a little while, and then I updated that to a version 1.1. I changed a few of the, the, the parts too, but anyway, this one's a total redesign. I know a bit more about designing circuits now. I know a bit more about feedback networks and such. I also f did a little more fine-tuned math and tweaked the EQ values so that the uh, mid-range was closer to uh, what I would call standard, you know, studio frequencies. I mean, 1K, 2K, and 4K is kind of an odd place. And the result of that is my version 2 kit, which is what this is. Um, this has all the parts that go to uh, recapping this entire module. Um, all the electrolytics, which are primarily uh, power supply. Uh, at least all of these uh, 330 microfarad caps. These are all uh, power supply, except for one. One of them is actually in the audio path as the main output. And that just couples directly to a transformer. So there's 10 of these, 330 microfarad, 50 volts. And um, yeah, this is a Nikicon audio series. Yeah, there we go. It's a UKA is the series. Uh, there's 10 of them in this kit, which is a little bit different than the last kit. I think I had eight in the last kit. Um, so then I've got a bunch of these uh, 100 microfarad, um, 35 volt. And uh, those, some of those are in the audio path. Some of those are in a feedback loop. Some of those, I think that's all that those do. Um, then I've got a couple of these 47 microfarad. They're the ones that are on this thing. Um, oh, there's one more, the hundreds. There's, there's five of those. And then there's four of the 47 microfarad. Um, those are in the echo send circuit. And also, I think it's a bypass cap as well in the main circuit. The main, the, the main, this is, so there's a, like a, a preamp circuit, the EQ circuit, and then a line output circuit. Uh, then I've got these 33 microfarad, 25 volt. That's just a feedback circuit and two of the 3.3s. Got these coupling caps. 
And there's uh, the, the, the coupling caps in the original Yamaha are these tantalums. I prefer these Wemas. Wemas are just, they're just like, it's like there's nothing there. It's, Wemas are full of tone because it just keeps whatever the sound is. They're just so neutral. Ooh, love them. So the Wema MKS2. And I've got five of these. They're 3.3 microfarad, 50 volt. And these are 10% uh, uh, accuracy. And the rest of these are 5%. Uh, I've got a 0.22 at 63 volt. That's in the, uh, that's one of the switchable mid ranges. Then I've got a 0.1 at 63 volt, another 5 percenter. That is, I believe, the middle value on the mid-range. And then I have a 0.047. Then I've got a uh, 39 nanofarad or 0.039 microfarad. That's the, uh, the shelf EQ for the treble. Yeah, that's right. And then I've got this, uh, not that one, it's this one. It's a 330 nanofarad or 0.33 microfarad. Uh, that's one of the high-pass filter caps. And then I've got the uh, 120 nanofarad or 0.12 microfarad. That's the other uh, high-pass filter cap. Uh, and then finally, I've got a couple of these little feedback caps. They're really tiny, tinies. Uh, there's two of these uh, 100 picofarad which are uh, feedback, uh, local feedback on the uh, the echo circuits. And then there's uh, two of these three here. Um, are well, All three of them are 47 picofarads. Two of them are in the main gain stages, the preamp and the line amp. And then the, the last one, I like to wire across the input transformer on the secondary. So it basically just filters out um, ultrasonic frequencies, just in case um, I add that. You don't really have to. Uh, I, I put it in there just in case you want to. So um, I'm going to recap this module. Uh, most of the time, these modules get racked up in some way or another, um, but these are going to stay regular console modules. I'm actually going to probably wind up selling this one and another one of these in order to raise some funds to build the rest of them into an actual rack. I don't, I have four of these and I don't really need more than two because I also have four of the master sections, which I'm gonna make into preamps. Those are really neat. They, uh, they essentially have the preamp and line amp gain blocks without the EQ. Those are gonna get recapped too. Again, I only need two of those, so I'm probably gonna build and sell a pair of those as well. So y'all, uh, I'm gonna go through and recap this thing. Uh, the way it works is I use a desoldering gun, uh, and I, I suck the solder off of the um, off the circuit board on the back. Then I loosen the parts and pull them out like teeth. Um, I'll, I'll do it in groups, and I, I have one I've already built in front of me for reference. I if I, if I didn't have one of those, I would refer to the pictures that I include. I, I include a, a electronic documentation with the kit in the form of written instructions like a map that shows you the layout of the board and what, where all the caps are and what they are. And then I have a chart that you can go and reference the old parts uh, to the new parts. So like, okay, this one right here is C37. C37 is the main output cap right here, okay? So uh, it's a, either a 33 or a 47 microfarad stock. Um, I replace it with a 330 microfarad. Um, and so its number on the chart will correspond. You'll see that when you look at the files. So there's also a picture of the finished kit. Although now that I have a version two, I need to take a new picture of a finished kit. I will uh, be desoldering and replacing these guys first, the, uh, the coupling caps. These are the five coupling caps. There's the main input. There's the uh, input to the EQ section. There's the input to the line in section, and then there's an input each to each of the echo sends. Yeah, I'll do those first, and then I'll go through and do the EQ uh, circuit, all of these guys. Then I'll do the feedback circuits. Then I'll go through and I'll do all the electrolytics. Now, a lot of these big electrolytics have some glue at the bottom that actually holds them to the circuit board. Um, so they're the most difficult, and I, I like to get the easy ones out of the way first because I, I not only have to be careful 
to take all the solder off so that I don't put too much pressure on it when I'm pulling from this side. Because if you leave too much solder on, it'll just rip up the, the trace. And the traces on here are generally pretty robust for solid state circuit board stuff. Thank goodness it's early, but um, you know, early solid state. That's why it's still discreet uh, before ICs and stuff. I'll show you that when I get to it, but uh, there is some glue that needs to be cleaned off of the board. And I do that with a little dental pick. I just kind of scrape it off, but um, all right. So first gig here will be, uh, I will take off this back panel and then I will uh, go from there. <laughs> 